All right, we're recording. What's up, everybody? What's up, guys? We're going to do our wrestling weekly uh, podcast. We're going to first go through the WWE, Monday Night Raw, and Friday Night SmackDown. And then we're going to talk about um, AEW. We're going to sort of split into two tonight. Since, um, well, we're just going to do it this way tonight, a little bit easier. First, talk about WWE, and then talk about AEW. So... We're ready to go. We're going to address Monday Night Raw first, which Kobe did not like, but we're still going to talk about it. So from Kentucky, um, what Monday Night Raw, um, freaking starts off with Seth Rollins on the microphone. Uh, freaking gets interrupted by Bobby Lashley. Then freaking um, Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali challenges them to a match. It sets up Mustafa Ali versus um, Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley just beat the shit out of this guy. He squashed him. Um, obviously, I think the referee stopped it. That's how bad it was. Mustafa Ali just got the hell out of being out of them. Bobby Lashley wins. I don't know what they're doing with Mustafa Ali. Um, I don't know what, the, what do you think about this, man? Just burying him every week, man. It's just, oh, it's like yeah. it's like they want us to feel sorry for him and then start cheering for him. I don't know what the hell they're trying to do with this Mustafa Ali storyline. I I don't see really anything. In he even lost on SmackDown. <laughs> yep, and then Ricochet just like was like holding his hand, and kind of feeling sorry for him. Yeah, it, it's like they want to feel sympathy for him. It's like we don't care about Mustafa Ali, Jesus Christ. Um, and then we get freaking Tamina versus Nia Yame. Um, Nia Yame wins the match. You know, um, freaking um, and then what we get um. Freaking, um, she gets recruited after the match backstage by uh, damage control, and she kind of tells them, Let me think about it, and I'll, I'll tell you later on, you know, whatever. Obviously, we know what happened later on. Um, but then, then get, we got pretty good match, man. Matt Riddle versus Chad Gable for fucking the first time in three months. Fucking Chad Gable won a fucking match, man. I thank you, I thank you for the academy. <laughs> <laughs> about fucking time first match in like three months fucking Chad Gable wins about fucking time they should give him a push man he deserves a push they really should man hopefully nice win over Matt Riddle because remember Matt Riddle remember Extreme Rules he main event with Seth Rollins and he won so that was a pretty good match for, for Chad Gable to win and then we get a fucking segment with freaking this is kind of funny I'll say Baron Corbin and freaking JBL playing on cards poker in the backstage and fucking uh, Atiro Kasawa comes in and beats some, takes all their money away. <laughs> that was a little bit, it was a little bit funny, I'll say. Comedy, man. This is sports. Yeah. See, if, if you're going to put these jobbers on, put it guys like R Truth, Kasiro Kasawa, Reggie. Don't put it, you know, at least, they, at least they're funny, right? Yeah. All right. And then it sets up a fucking match with Baron Corbin and um, Akira Tosawa. Obviously, Baron, Cor- I mean, Baron Corbin wins, you know, whatever. I can't believe that was a match, man. I'm like, really? They, they don't know what to do with, it seems like. now. They don't know what to do with Baron Corbin now. Like, they put him with JD, but they don't know what the fuck to do with him, it seems like. Yeah, like, I, I, think, don't, I don't think that thing's working. Honestly, I think they they hoped, they thought it was going to be like Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman, and they realized it's not working. <laughs> so now he's kind of like a mid-carter, like almost jobbers. <laughs> Fucking Baron Corbin is not talented enough like that. Like, yeah, they. I think that's what they were shooting for, like low key, like a freaking kind of Brock Lesnar, uh, Paul Heyman type shit. And it's not working, so they don't know what the fuck to do now. So they got fucking him. Didn't he last week too? He a job or two. I forgot who it was, but it wasn't in our truth. He, yeah, it's he's doing a bunch of freaking jobbers. Um. And then we get freaking Miss TV, Johnny Gargano, and the Miss. And then freaking, I guess, um, Johnny Gargano's there, and it, it, uh, it, it goes, you know, they're going to have a match at Survivor Series, I think, and if um, uh, Dexter Loomis wins, he gets paid the money he may own some, and he gets a WWE contract, so we know most likely Dexter Loomis is going to win, and he'll finally get a WWE contract, and hopefully it fucking ends the storyline. Yeah, for God's sakes, just end this shit. Jesus Christ. Um... And then we get freaking a uh, freaking um, little in backstage argument between Dominic and Benjamin, which sets up fucking Dominic versus Shel- uh, Shelton Benjamin. 
Dominic Wentz, yeah, whatever, just a filler, I guess. Poor Shelton, man. Pendejo face for people were mad on Twitter that that Shelton Benjamin lost to you. They're like, really? He lost to Dominic. People people hate Dominic, so they were pissed that Shelton Benjamin lost to him. The guy's a jobber, man. I feel bad for Shelton. Man. Yeah, honestly. Um, and then we get Austin Theory. You know, the interview I'm about the cashing in last week, and he pretty much started to explain. He was like, you know, look at Roman Reigns, man. I tried to cash in on twice, and um. Either the bloodline stopped me, Brock Lesnar, or frick, remember Tyson Fury at a Clash of the Castle. So he pretty much said, I had no answer for Roman Reigns, whether it was the bloodline, Tyson Fury, or fucking Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. So I, he's on stop over right now, so that's why he went over. He tried to explain it, at least he tried to, but obviously still looks stupid, right, for cashing on a, on a Medicare championship. Yeah. All right, and then it sets up a match. I think Dolph Ziggler walked into him, and, you know, he's like, I tried to tell you, kid, but you wouldn't listen. So he's like, I'm tired of being the, the, the future. I'm officially the present. He touches Dolph Ziggler to a match, which was a pretty good match, but I think we'll get it. Hold on. We'll get more into it. Um, next week, freaking had, um, we had a tag team match. It was... Um, Io Sky and uh, Dakota Kai versus Nikki Cross and Dana Brooks. Um, Freaking um, Io Sky, uh, the damage control won the match. And then after that, Nia Yim walks out and she's like, I made my choice. And she, instead of going with the damage control, she ends up joining um, the uh, team Bianca Belair with Alexa Bliss and Asuka. So and then later on in the night, uh, they recruit Rhea Ripley. So Rhea Ripley's now on damage control with Nick Cross. So I think, I think they set up the, the damage control as their team, right? It's Bianca Belair, Io Sky, Dakota Kai, Nikki Cross, and Rhea Ripley. And then the other team, they're just missing that final person, which is either going to be Candice LeRae or maybe Sasha Banks. Yeah. Man, if they don't have Sasha Banks on the show, oh, boy. But also, I, I heard Dana Brooks. That might could be another option, I heard. Oh, um, no. Jesus Christ. Because supposedly she's going to win payback for Nikki Cross throwing the 24-7 the title in the garbage can. Oh, Jesus man. Christ. Oh, my Lord. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'd rather see Candice LeRae. <laughs> Honestly, man. Jesus Christ. So we get Austin Theory versus Dolph Ziggler. It was a good match as a start, man. But then, um, freaking Dolph Ziggler, uh, uh, Austin Theory just goes crazy mode, starts beating the shit out of um, Dolph Ziggler over the damn place. The referee calls for the bell. They they pull the security, and it looked it made freaking Theory at least look like a badass. But I mean, I don't know. At this point, it might be too late. But we'll see. Um. Next, we freaking get, um, let's see here, um, oh, we also had in this match, right, AJ Styles challenged Finn Balor to a match at Survivor Series, which Finn Balor accepted, so that's another match for Survivor Series, Finn Balor, which I think would actually be a good match, man, Finn Balor, AJ Styles, I'm kind of excited for that match. That's gonna be a good match. It is, man. So then we get the fucking main event uh, for the United States Championship, Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins. It was a good match. Um, obviously, there was interference from um, Judgment Day and the original club and everybody. At the end, they're fucking um, Seth Rollins hit him with a curse stomp, and he retains. But after the match, once again, Austin Theory comes out, beats the shit out of Rollins. And that was pretty end of the, the, the end of the show, uh, Austin Theory um, holding the, the championship over Seth Rollins laying on his back. What do you think? you think we're going to get Seth Rollins versus Austin Theory at um, Survivor Series? I mean, because we already, we know, we thought Seth Rollins would possibly be at a War Games if Kevin Owens couldn't, but obviously we know that's not the case anymore. So it's either he, he either wrestles Austin Theory or no match for Rollins at Survivor Series. Yeah, I think they should add um, Theory and Rollins for Survivor Series because Rollins needs to be on a pay-per-view. It seems like it's been a while. He, he already skipped He skipped Summers. He wasn't on SummerSlam. He wasn't on Crown Jewel. Yeah, they got it. They, they got it. They, they got to come. He's been a very shitty year. I mean, he's finishing strong here as a United States champion, but 
Yeah, it would be kind of bullshit if they have a May SummerSlam and then Survivor Series again. Like, if you want to make the United States title look important, have it on the pay-per-view. It seems like they just try to, like, because they're doing the same thing with Gunther and fucking, um, who, who was it? Gunther and um, Rey Mysterio, right? They had the match at SmackDown instead of the pay-per-view. It seems like they, they use the, the Mid-Cars champion to main event Ron SmackDown. It seems like that's what they do. Yeah, I don't like that. All right. So what do you give this show? Um, maybe like a B or a C? Yeah. I thought there was like too much like matches that were just thrown together. Like a lot of random matches, I feel like. I, I, I thought the best matches were probably Chad Gable versus Matt Riddle, um, Sigler versus um, Deary, and probably Rollins versus Balor. Everything else kind of. Yeah. Those are like the three best things on the show, like three best matches. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, you, you the, the woman, right? We we know who the, the teams are officially with Nia Yame and Rhea Ripley being the final two members. We get officially maybe a fucking hopeful uh, an ending soon with the match being announced between The Miz and Dexter Loomis. Um, we get... The exciting night match. I think this will be a good match. AJ Styles versus um, Finn Balor. So there was some good stuff on this show. Um, again, it seems like they don't know what the fuck they're doing with Ben Corbin, but it was a BC probably show. All right. Let's go to SmackDown now. Um, SmackDown, are you ready for a good time? What the fuck is happening? Actually, I really enjoyed SmackDown this week. I really did. SmackDown's a good show. It, it's just the two hours, man. It makes it easier to watch. Two oh, hours. Is- like, I enjoyed a lot of this stuff. It's two hours, man. It's easier to um, enjoy it, man. It's easier to um, to take it in. Yeah, way better than three hours. What, what, what was the date on? Uh, was it the 18? I don't even know. I think it was the 18, right? Yeah, it was 18. Yeah, because Dynamite 16, and okay. So, SmackDown. Are you ready for Jesus Christ? SmackDown. All right. Shit, what the fuck? Um, all righty, so SmackDown from freaking um, Hartford, Connecticut, not too far away from where the headquarters are in Stanford, Connecticut. Very interesting that both um, Dynamite and SmackDown this week were in fucking Connecticut. That's weird, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of weird how it went out, yep. Um, so we start off with the fucking um, the Brawling Brutes, man. They're freaking doing their promo with Sheamus and uh, Drew McIntyre. And then Zami Zayn comes out and pretty much guarantees that he don't care who their final member is. The um, the Bloodline's going to win the War Games match. Um, later on, it, we, them, it ended up being the main event, right? Uh, Zami Zayn versus fucking um, Butch. Um, so they're just going at it, flapping their gums. And then we get the, the Mustafa Lee. We can't get this guy off our screen anymore. Mustafa Ali versus Ricochet. Good match. I will say this. They had a good match. Um, I'll, I'll give them that. You know, I think both of them, I'm not interested in both neither of the characters. I think they're boring. But I will say that was a good match. That was a good match they put on. A bunch of, they did a backstabber off the uh, top rope. Um, they ended up with, a, I think, a shooting star press from, um, from Ricochet. Um, I thought Mustafa Ali did a good job playing off the rip injury the whole match. It was a good match. Obviously, uh, Ricochet's won at the end. He advances in the um, World Cup tournament. What do you think about this? He's going to face Braun Strowman next week. He's going to lose. It looks like it's going to be Gunther versus Strowman. And we'll talk about what um, happened later in the show. Braun Strowman and Ricochet were talking about they got into it backstage. It was pretty yeah. So that was it was a good match. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a pretty good start with the, with the Brawling Brutes and the uh, Zami Zayn promo. And then this match, pretty good start of the show. And then freaking 
Jay Uso's backstage, he's pissed off at Sami Zayn for guaranteeing a win. You know, they're always fucking arguing, whatever. Um, they did announce that Roman Reigns is going to be at the show, which I was surprised. So they, they, they're like, we better chill, guys. Roman Reigns is going to be here later on tonight. So that was good. Um, and then we freaking get... Um, we freaking get uh, Karrion Cross versus um, Matt Cat Moss. Again, before the match, you have fucking Emma trying to motivate Matt Cat Moss. And then he just goes out there and loses again to Karrion Cross. He was trying to get payback for like three weeks ago, losing to the guy. And now he loses again. And they hope <laughs> man, for freaking Matt Cat Moss. And I don't, you, I don't know if you noticed or not, but uh, Emma called him by his like NXT name, like Roderick. Really? Yeah, or but the, the commentator still called out Matt Camosh, right? Yeah, but like Emma just like said his real name of NXT. I'm like, damn, she fucked up and they whole face. Yeah, I think I, I, don't, I don't understand what they're doing. Like, are they gonna have like a, like a couple feud or what the fuck? Look, I I I think they're starting to realize that because I I told you that this dude is not doing anything. Like nobody cares about him. Karen Cross. I think they're gonna make a switch here where they're gonna give um. Yeah, obviously the top heel is Roman Reigns, but the second heel, I think they thought it was Karen Cross, but I think it's more um, LA Knight, and that's why LA Knight starting to feud with Bray Wyatt, and this Karen Cross guy, I hate to say it, but he's probably gonna go a med car slash jobber if he doesn't get, he's just not getting reactions. Yeah, nobody, I don't think nobody that... cheers for him. They don't even boo; it's just quiet. Yeah, they don't care about him. Um, I and I think that's what they did. They flip flopped them. Like now they're the, what what they. I wouldn't be surprised if the plan was to get for Karen Cross to be the first um, few with Bray Wyatt, and they're like, nope, nobody gives a shit about him, and they they gave it to LA Knight instead. But it seemed like Triple H was very high on this guy, and it's just not people don't seem to give a shit about him. So maybe not. Now they're gonna throw him in a mid card freaking romantic storyline with Scarlett and versus Matt Cat Moss and Emma. Maybe that's what they're going with. Who knows? Huge step back for this Karen Cross guy. <laughs> Is he going to end up? Maybe Vince McMahon was right. <laughs> that's why he had him fucking job out to Jeff Hardy in this first match. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, well. Um, next, we freaking had um, Bray Wyatt out to the ring. And he tried to apologize to um, LA Knight for headbutting him last week. Um, a, uh, LA Knight first um, slaps him and then he gets out of the ring to have some apology accepted but then he hits him like he punches him and he's like nope now I now I got the upper hand and then he just walks away they freaking go to commercial he's trying to run out of the building um, they, they, but did you see right when um, after the Kieran Cross match the Usos were trying to see if Kieran Cross is going to be the which doesn't make any sense he just got done feuding with McIntyre, why the fuck would he tag team with them? But they're asking him, are you the fifth member? He's like, nope. And then, did he see backstage Bray Wyatt was, like, talking to himself? That was interesting. I think maybe that was the whole theory they're trying to do, where it's, like, supposedly it's Uncle Howdy trying to make him to do bad stuff. So, who knows? But I did catch that. A bunch of people caught that, caught that on Twitter. So then, you like, like, like talking to himself? Yeah, supposedly. And then, um... So, yeah, they go to commercial break. Uh, Keith, uh, LA Knight's trying to run into the building. As he's trying to leave, you see the freaking, it's all dark, and you see the white logo. And then they come back from commercial break, and he's all beat up. All the fucking furniture, all the equipment's on him. Um, <laughs> so I wonder, I wonder, it looks like this, this they're not going to have a match of Survivor Series. I think they're slowly fucking going to, um, uh, slowly going to do this. It looks like, I thought maybe for a while, for a minute, they were going to have the match at Survivor Series, but they might win to a Royal Rumble. We'll see. They might even give LA Knight maybe like one or two weeks where, he, oh, he can't even show up. He's hurt. Who knows what they're going with this. But hey, they're at least they're starting to get Bray Wyatt in some type of storyline. Yeah. It's better than just fucking talking all the time. Yep. Um, next, we got Shayna Vaisler fucking losing to Shotzi. Um, well, some people were mad that they made Shayna Baszler look weak. They were finally starting to make her look like a badass, and now they made her look weak here. But obviously, if you you have to have Shotzi win. She's a fucking number one contender. You got to make her look strong. But a lot of people were like, how come you didn't put her versus Natalia or somebody else? Why fucking um, Shayna Baszler? 
Yeah, and, but I mean, Shotzi has to win. She's the number yeah. one contender. Yeah, that's what people are saying. We get Shotzi has to win because she's a normal contender. Got to make her look strong. But how come she's, they were like, how come you, they didn't use freaking Aleya or somebody else? Why fucking, eh, whatever. Um, and then we freaking get um, Imperium versus the New Day and um, Braun Strowman. This match, a lot of people were pissed off because most of the night it seemed like Gun- the, the match Gunther was afraid to fight Braun Strowman. Made him look like a pussy the whole night. They did have a little bit of um, interaction, but most of the night it seems like Gunther was running away from Strowman, which like many people are saying on Twitter, is probably going to lead to Strowman winning the World Cup, and he's going to be the number one contender to face Gunther. Obviously, the fucking... Um, freaking... Um, What do you call it? The fucking New Day and Braun Strowman one. But yeah, what do you think about the they're having Gunther run away from Strowman the whole match? It's kind of making him look weak. Exactly. There's other ways to do it, honestly. What they should have probably done is they should have had them like face each other like two or three times, and not like right right when they're gonna fucking fight each other, have somebody else you have it like a New Day member or like an Imperium member come in and interrupt them. But to to make Gunther look like he's scared of him, make look, Gunther look like a pendejo. Um, yeah. And then you said you wanted to talk about the the interview that um Strowman had after the match, where he got interrupted by Ricochets. Yeah, he he mentioned about the tweet he put out about flippy floppers. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I, I'm assuming Strowman's gonna win that match, but that's gonna be an interesting match next week because they legit have some real life beef over Twitter. Um, him and Mustafa Ali and even freaking uh, Chris Jericho got in it. Uh, Will Ospreay from New, New Japan got in it. A bunch of wrestlers got in that thing. So interesting to see how, how that match goes on next week between Strowman and Ricochets. Even Michael Cole mentioned on, on commentary. Yep. So we'll see. We'll see, man. Um, and next we got the main event, which was fucking um, Butch versus fucking um, Zemi Sane. The World Cup, but nobody really gave about it, man. Everybody was more focused on fucking, you know, it ended up leading up to fucking a brawl between the, the brawling brutes and the bloodline. Roman Reigns ends up coming in, starts kind of beating the shit out of everybody. And then fucking, um, everybody was so happy, man. Kevin Owens, indeed, even it was reported he was going to be not miss the match into a leg injury. He's going to end up being a part of the match. He comes in. He starts brawling with Roman Reigns, stunners Roman Reigns. That was pretty much the end of the show, man. Um, the brawling brutes standing tall. Excuse me. Um, yeah, the brawling brutes: Sheamus, Kevin Owens, um, Drew McIntyre, freaking, and the bloodline looking like pendejos, like in shock that fucking, especially Sami Zayn, that Kevin Owens is the fifth member. This should be a great match, right? Yeah, it's gonna be a fucking banger. And the crowd was going nuts when they heard Kevin Owens come out. Yeah, he even thanked them on Twitter the next. He's like, oh, my God, thank you guys so much. It was one of the biggest nights of my life. He, like, he was very emotional about it on Twitter after the show was over. I think he didn't, he didn't expect people to go that crazy for him. I think it's because they, they have said that he wasn't going to wrestle. So I think people got super like surprised and also happy that it turns out he is going to be part of the match. Yeah, because a couple of days before, it said he's going to be out for six to eight weeks. Yep. And he looked fine. Like, he, I thought maybe they were just going to bring him out, and he actually got physical. Like, he got into it with Roman Reigns. So it looks like he's healthy. It looks like he's healthy. That's going to be a great match, man. And the thing is that all, Michael Cole kept saying it, right? Every time he, like, first he started brawling with um, Sheamus and then um, Kevin Owens and then McIntyre. And every time Michael Cole would say, these two have history. Remember, Sheamus cashed in back in twenty. 20- um, 18, he catches in his money in the bank uh, on Roman Reigns. Same thing. The, Kevin Owens and um, Roman Reigns have history. They fought in a last man standing match last year. Um, Drew McIntyre obviously just fought him at um, Clash Crown. So I, I like that, that Roman Reigns has history with at least three of the guys. That makes it look good. Yeah. And then, and then the Brawling Brutes, obviously. I mean, I think they're more for a He's going to set up a tag team match with Rich Holland and Butch versus the Usos. So we'll yeah. see. Everything in this match makes sense. Like, they all have history. 
Obviously, yeah. And a lot of people are like, there's that rumor going around that it's going to lead up to a Royal Rumble, Sheamus and Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship, the Universal, Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn one-on-one, the Brawling Brutes versus the Usos in a tag team match for the tag team champions, and Drew McIntyre versus Osa Cola. A lot of people are saying this is like the start of a long-term feud that's going to uh, end up being a bunch of different matches at Royal Rumble. But you, I think that's a possibility, right? With the two months of no pay-per-views, they might just take the time and do this, right? Yeah. And if that's the case with those matches, like that's like freaking good matches right there for Royal Rumble. Yeah, especially so, uh, Solo Sokola, Drew McIntyre, that would be great. The others we've seen, but I'll take them. I'll take, we've seen Sheamus versus Roman, but I'll take it. Obviously, we've seen Kevin Owens versus Zami, but that's always a good match. Um, I, you know, we've never seen Rich Holland and Butch, so that'll be a good new match as well. But yeah, um, yeah, man, I mean, it's it's gonna be exciting, man. I can't wait. This pay per view has like five card of uh, five matches, right? I think, yeah, but the, the right two, now, the two, they, they might add Seth, like we, like we said, they might add Seth Rollins in theory. I think that I think they should have Rollins because they already had a miss SummerSlam and Crown Jewel. You had him lose three straight. You had him lose at WrestleMania along with two other times to Cody Rhodes. Have him go out with a banger, man, and have him at least get a match and a win over Austin Theory at Survivor Series. Uh, but yeah, man, good show. Yeah, B plus A probably. Very good show. Um, I'm happy Roman Reigns has been appearing a lot on SmackDown. Um, there's a good chance he's fucking appear next week again. This is going to be the final show before Survivor Series. So good SmackDown, man. That's my that's my problem. Like he's my problem is he's never on Raw. It seems like so. Yeah, because he's supposed to be representing both brands as the both the Universal Universal Champion and the WWE Champion. But I hate how they just come they combine the titles. I hate that. Like they they call him the the Universal WWE Champion. It should just be like. I wish they would just do like universal. It would be easier to split the titles if they were just the fact that they have them combine them and like both times he like when he defends them, it's for both titles. How the fuck are they? It's gonna be harder to like split one of the titles away from them, right? Yeah, they should just give the, the WWE championship back to Raw for God's sakes. Exactly, like it's gonna be harder for them because you're gonna go from oh it's it's a combined title like both of them. But then how are you going to eventually, oh, no, now it's only for the WWE Championship. Like, that's going to be tough to explain because this whole time, they, they, they're being, even though it's two titles, it's being presented just as one title. So that's going to be interesting to see when they do want to eventually send the, the WWE Championship back to Raw. How, how do they explain that it's only this time, this third, so they're going to have a match. So this, this match is only for the WWE, not the Universal. Um, so we'll see where they get, when they get to that point, how they how they um, do that storyline to get the, we'll hopefully it'll be soon in 2022, maybe as early as uh, Royal Rumble or like right around that stage. But yeah, man, um, what do you want to do now? You want to talk about just full gear or Dynamite 2? You can just go through um, full gear, I guess, real quick. All right. Because like a lot of the same stuff happened on like Dynamite to full gear, you know what I mean? Like, and like, we haven't talked about like full gear like yet. Yeah. All right. So let's do full gear. Like it was a pretty good pay per view, honestly. Me? Like, did you watch it or no? Yeah, I got um Flight TV. What really? Mhm. Flight TV. My $60. uncle. Sent, my uncle sent it to me. Hold on. Full gear. How do you? Hold on. Full gear. Shit. So you didn't see it all at all? That's good. Yeah, I ended up watching the whole shit. Wow, how long was it? Like freaking four hours? Three three hours and a half. It started at seven. It was over at ten thirty. I was watching it along with the freaking um the USC UCLA game. I was literally, I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to watch this, but no, I I it was, I literally was just like this the whole time. I had it on my iPad. But yeah, man, my uncle, he's like, yeah, I have full gear. I have um, flight TV. I can send you the, um, my, um, my, like my, my password and shit. And that's how I did it. Um, 
that's like an international website, I think. He's in Mexico, so that's why I think it works for him. Because here in the U.S., all they have is this uh, direct TV and Bleacher Report. Yeah, I, I don't know how it works, um, but I, 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 we can talk about that once the show's over. Um, but anyways, Full Gear, man, pretty damn good show. I think only two matches I thought were bad. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, man. My um, um, in the tag team match with Jeff Jarrett and uh, what's his name? Um, Jeff Jarrett and that other idiot. <laughs> my my thing froze. My computer, and I didn't even try to like bring it back i'm like fuck this i'm gonna watch the football game and then 10 minutes later i'm like oh okay let me but i was not into what's his name scorpio sky um jeff J- lito lito whatever the fuck his name is i didn't my my, my my tablet froze i didn't even attempt to get back i'm like fuck this i mean it's a sign this match sucks um so i i think and- i missed a, a few spots in that match but outside of that outside of that match i watched everything but anyways Another match that sucked was um, um, Jake Cargill match. The I I I think I mentioned that yesterday. Yeah, that one in the Jake Cargill Malaga Rose. Yeah, the the only cool was that Vicky Guerrero came out in the in the in the Eddie Guerrero's car and she was a uh, real Ripley shirt. Um, mommy, remember the? Oh, really? She yeah, and he, he, Rio Ripley on Twitter was like Vicky, and she put a heart. Yeah, oh, she was she was wearing mommy shirt from um, Rhea Ripley because you know how um, Eddie's poppy, right? Her husband. Yeah, she, she was wearing mommies from Rhea Ripley. I thought that was kind of cool. That I'm surprised Tony Khan let her do that, but what? I mean, there's a good chance that maybe a lot of people who don't watch WWE they don't even know what that's from. But I thought that was cool that she wore Rhea Ripley's mommy shirt and then Rhea Ripley acknowledged it on Twitter. That was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, man, this show, man. What, what about Grimm's toy show, man? He was in front. Did you see him? In the yeah, front the, row? Was, he was there a few times, man. He was going off. Um, so from New York, New Jersey, where the fuck it was. Um, freaking, um, first match, man. Jungle Boy versus Luchasaurus. What a great match, man. Blood all over the place right away at the end there, man. Freaking, um. Jungle Boy actually made him tap. I didn't know if I liked that, man. He put him through a table, and then um, he went to the top of the cage, and he hit him with a freaking um, elbow drop, and then he pretty um, he put him in a freaking um, in a freaking um, submission hole, and he made him tap. So Jungle Boy won the match. I don't know if I liked him making. I would have rather have him either escape or have him pin him. I thought that was the. I, I thought it made um Luca, Lu, Luchasaurus look weak that he made him tap. Yeah, did, did you pick Luchasaurus or Jungle Boy? I picked Luchasaurus. I think he's a different character. I feel like Jungle Boy is just another, like, in the words of Braun Strowman, another flip flopper. I, 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 I think there's some more like, money with Strom. I mean, with um, Luchasaurus. Hopefully, they move on with the storyline because I'm sick of it. Huh? Yeah, I think this should be it for them. Hopefully, it's it. Hopefully. Anyways, it's gonna be out for a while, so it was a good match, man. All of these matches, outside of maybe two, all these matches were good. Um, next we had the freaking um Jewish title, man. Tri- that triangle versus the elite, the young bucks and Kenny Omega. And what fucking happened in this match was fucking um, finally um, freaking um, Pac convinced um, Phoenix to cheat. With the with the bat with the bat, he hit um one of the young bucks in the face of the bat. Um, it was Kenny Omega, I think he hit in the face, and that's how they won the match. They pin him, and Bat Triangle retained their their trio championships. What do you think about uh, the the elites losing their first match back? I don't know if that's a good idea. Why would you, like it? Kind of makes them like look weird. Like they come back from their return and they just fucking so, lose. So I think a lot of people were saying that it was very predictable the elites were going to win and that they were just placeholders, the the death triangle. So I think that was part of it too. And they actually announced during the show that it's going to be a best of seven, death triangle versus the elites. They're going to face each other six more times. That's fucking terrible, man. Are you kidding? I, I don't know if I like that. Um, and now obviously... It, it looks like um, with the way the, the match ended with um, with them cheating, 
it looks like so the elites are now baby faces and that triangles um the heels. Yeah. I don't get it. Some people complain that WWE has too much rematches, but six more times? Jesus. I th- I think I think they're trying to like the, the, the eventually I'm pretty sure fucking the 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 elites are gonna win the titles, right? That's why they're doing it. They're trying to like they don't just want to give them the titles right away and make the fucking that triangle look like oh they were just placeholders while the suspension was going on. Yeah, the elites are they're gonna go to seven and then the elites are gonna win the titles probably. We'll see. Whatever. Honestly, like, would you even do the trio titles? Like, do they even have enough trios? Honestly, I I I, I think they they're doing it for Kenny Omega because they want him to be champion, but he because he's hurt and old. He probably can't be like fucking AEW champion or even fucking TNT champion. So this is a way to have Kenny Omega be a champion, but in a way kind of have the young bucks do all the work in the matches. Almost like when that kid that does the doesn't do anything in the group but still gets an A. That's what Kenny Omega's doing right now, pretty much. He wants yeah. to be a champion, but he doesn't want to wrestle because he's banged up. Um, but anyways, um next we had um freaking the boring one, probably the most boring match of the night. We have Malga Rose versus Jay Cargirl. Fucking Jay Cargirl wins. Very boring match. I don't think there's much to say here. It, I think the match lasted like seven minutes. Like nobody it was cared. Very boring. Yeah. Um, and next we had a great match, the freaking Ring of Honor Fatal Four Way match. Chris Jericho putting the, the world title on the line versus Sammy Guevara, Brian Danielson, Claudio. Um, so obviously at first Brian Danielson and um, Claudio are working as a tag team and same thing Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho but eventually obviously they start fighting each other and at the end there looked like a chance where maybe Sammy Guevara might may win actually um, but then freaking um, Jericho hits the freaking elbow, the Judas elbow and he pins Claudio and he retains the title they kept um, when um, the match was over for like a, maybe a good two minutes, three minutes, they kept showing uh, Jericho holding up the title on the ramp, and they kept, like, almost, like, showing the Titantron. I thought maybe something was going to happen. I'm like, what is it? Some, I thought, I think maybe CM Punk or somebody was going to come back, but nothing happened. Maybe they were just trying to kill time. But it, yeah. I, I thought for sure something was going to happen after the match. Um, and next we had freaking um, Saraya versus Britt Baker. Um, this was kind of, you know, obviously very emotional. Soraya's first match back in five years. It was kind of sloppy. Obviously, she could have done better. But Soraya won the match. I had the match wrong. I, I picked Britt. Yeah, I told you they were going to have Soraya win her first match. Um, but it yeah, was, it, 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 rematch. It, was, it, it was better than, um, obviously, Malga Rose and um, Jay Cargirl. But it wasn't that good either. But obviously, it's understandable. But Soraya was very... Like you could tell, she was kind of nervous to every t- like to take some bumps. Yeah, um, I was about wrestling. No. Her boyfriend was there, or her husband, and they were crying, hugging each other after the match. So yeah, um, and then we freaking had the triple threat match: Power Hops, freaking Samoa Joe and Warlow, and the fucking surprising thing, fucking this, um, freaking Warlow won this fucking match. He fucking grabbed the title and he freaking had um he had fucking Warlow with the title and then he freaking put um Hops in the Coquina clutch and Hops tapped out and so now he's he he's now both the TNT and the television champion fucking Samoa Joe. I don't agree with this one. He's a guy I thought that were not gonna win this match. We both thought this. I, we thought Samoa Joe we thought Samoa Joe was there to take the pin. Um, for so Hobbs could win, but at the same time protect um, Warlow. In terms of how he fucking won the match, oh, and, and, I, and they I, fucking I, again, just like with Luchasaurus, same thing. They made Warlow. They made fucking Hobbs tap out. I didn't like how they they making all these fucking big badasses tap out like pendejos. And why does Samoa Joe need two belts? Just... I don't get it either, man. A lot of people are saying it's going to set up a one-on-one match between Samoa Joe and Warlow, and then Warlow's going to win the title back. I think it's kind of yeah, stupid. It's so stupid, man. 
Yeah, so now Samoa Joe. I don't know why the fuck Tony Khan is getting, it's getting him all these titles, honestly. He's like FTR. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, and then we freaking get the match where <laughs> my freaking thing froze and I kind of just let it froze for a little bit. So I, I missed half of the match. <laughs> Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett versus Darby Allen and Sting. Um, Sting and Darby Allen won. Um, a coffin drop off the top rope on Jay Lethal and um, uh, uh, Darby Allen pinned Jay Lethal. And that was the end of the match. Um, hopefully, this is the final time we see um, the first and final and last time we see fucking Jeff Jarrett on fucking AEW, um, at least in the ring. Yeah, and Sting d- does his always crazy stuff. He jumped off like the, the fans. And I missed that because my shit was frozen. I should have probably. Yeah, if I knew that was going to happen, I probably would have. Yeah, this was probably the second most boring match of the night. It, was, it wasn't that boring. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't that boring. Um, but it's just that I don't give a shit about neither Jay Lethal or Jeff Jarrett. But it wasn't that boring. I, I'm probably being a little bit too um, harsh. And then fucking just, I'm just not interested in fucking watching Jeff Jarrett and fucking Jay Lethal wrestle. And then anyway. Is- huh? And Sting is 63. Yeah, and then the other guy sucks, Jay Lethal. Um, and then Jeff Jarrett, too. He's up there in age. And then we get one of the one of the most exciting matches of, of the night, man. Probably top three. Jamie Hayter versus fucking Tony Storm, man. The amount of fucking, like, times I thought this match was over, and they kept kicking out with, like, two, like, two and a quarter. Three and a, like, it was amazing, man. Um... Freaking um, Britt Baker at the end. Uh, she fucking curse stomp. Um, freaking um, Tony Storm outside of the ring. She put she threw her back in, and she and freaking Tony Storm still kicked out. They made they made sure they made Tony Storm look strong even in a loss. They did a good job. Yeah, uh, I just want to think, like Jamie Hader won the match is good, but they have to get rid of the interim shit. Yeah, even some wrestlers are saying it now. Um, Sean Spears and um, who somebody else said it. Even the wrestlers are starting to say it now. They got to take the fucking interim shit off. And they asked Tony Khan about it once again, and he told, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a conversation with uh, Thunder Rosa, and I'm gonna see. I, I want her to give me a, a timetable on what you think she's gonna come back. And I feel if that timetable is too far away, I'm gonna seriously consider taking the interim tag away. So it's we'll dumb. see." Makes the champion like mean meaningless. And now, and now, um, Tony Storm, I guess she's pissed off because they're saying that because she was always the interim title, it might not even count. Like her reign yeah. might not even go on the records book. Guess what? Same thing for Jamie Hayter. It won't even fucking count. Yeah, that's why people are pissed. All that fucking hard work. Even Britt Baker's like, "You're my champion," like, like saying because you know she hates Thunder Rosa in real life. Britt Baker. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of a lot of people are are, are kind of like pushing Tony Khan to take the interim tag away. So we'll see what happens. But at the end, there, Britt Baker once again they they expose the turnbuckle. Um, Tony Storm hit the, the exposed turnbuckle, and that's how um, uh, Jamie Hader won. So they they did a good job of making Tony Storm look strong. They had a big, they had a kick out of, of a few big shots. Um, but yeah, great Jamie Hader man won. Britt Baker, I was surprised. I thought, even after the match, I'm like, is she going to turn on her after the match? But no, she was just out there celebrating with her. So pretty interesting to see where they go from there. Um, and then we get a freaking Keith Lee and um, Swerve versus uh, the Acclaim. And this was the opposite of earlier in the night with the um, same thing. Swerve tries to convince Keith Lee to cheat. But instead of that triangle where they... Uh, Pac did convince Phoenix not here. Keith Lee ends up walking away, and the Acclaim win the match. And then but Swerve slapped the shit out of him. He slapped him in the face. Yeah, he slapped him in the face. Swerve slapped him in the face. Keith Lee got pissed off and walked away. So it looks like it's going to set up a Swerve versus Keith Lee feud now. And hopefully the Acclaim can now finally face FTR. I can't believe FTR wasn't on the show. It just... Yeah, man. I don't know when those guys' contract expires, but they, they, they might not resign with the way they're getting treated, man. Honestly. 
And that was actually the co-main event. Grimm's Toy Show said on his YouTube channel, he's like, I can't believe this. Like, people are not going to even acknowledge it, but fucking Max Caster got to co-main event. Yeah. Right. And so, GTS. Yeah, and, yes, and Max Caster. He co-main event of the show. He was the second to last match on. So he was like, Grimm was like, from, I'm so proud of this guy, man, from fucking wrestling in my fucking backyard. He now just fucking co-main event in a fucking pay-per-view on TV. Yeah, Grimm was a kind of emotional body. And then we get the fucking main event, MJF versus John Moxley. Um, the people were fucking um, cheering for Mox uh, for MJF because he's from New York. So, and even John Moxley was kind of like playing along and acting more like a heel. He kept uh, attacking his leg. Um, and the fans said, "Fuck you, Moxley." And same thing they did it to um, during the um, the Death Triangle and Elite match. They were saying, "Fuck you, CM Punk," and the start of that match. Did you hear that? That's what Grim was saying. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, man. Um, I even wondered: are, is it possible that John Moxley cheats and that's how he wins? Because they were like, he was like embracing being a heel. So I'm like, what, what if John Moxley cheats to win? And they, they, so they do a double turn. Like he turns heel and um and and and, and MJF turn babyface. But no, it was it was the finish. A lot of people predicted. Which uh, ended up being Jericho. Um, excuse me. Um, William Regal um, gave him the brass knuckles, and that's how he won the match. And he's yeah. the new well, AEW champion. Is, is Regal with MJF now, or how's that? Yeah, I, I think he laughed. Like he didn't celebrate with him. And then when he did the, you just like he thought that he did the press conference. Yeah, he didn't show up with him in the press conference either. So I don't know what they're doing. Um, and Moxley, I mean, at the end, they, I think they were off the air by now, but I know the Claudio and Brian Danielson and um, um, Willer Yuta went up to the ring with him and helped them up and everything. So I don't know. A lot of rumors are that John Mox is going to take some time off. Who knows where they go from here? Um, it's kind of a new era now, I feel like, with, with um, MJF being the champion now. It's kind of like a new era. We'll see where yeah. it's going to be exciting to see where they go from here. It's finally not a WWE guy as champion, you know? Yeah, and even with even with the woman, it's Jamie Hayter. Yeah. It's like AEW Originals are champion finally. That's why they, they, they fucking they should have kept the um the fucking belt on Warlow, the TNT, because if you would have kept the they, all the all of them would have been AEW right now, AEW originals. Yeah, now fucking Samoa Joe's champion. Samoa Joe's the only everybody else is an AEW original. Because Jake Cargo, TBS, the acclaimed attack teams, Jamie Hayter, the um, the woman, MJF. Yeah, outside of fucking Samoa Joe, all the titles are held by AEW Originals. Yeah, and they it's were a- faced by Tony yeah. kind of letting Samoa Joe win the title instead of having Samoa uh, World retain. It's a good sign they're making some Originals, like, fighting champions. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind WWE guys. I mean, he's still using um, Jericho, right, as Ring of Honor champion, but at least the AEW titles are all outside of the TNT title are all held by originals. So, yeah, this was a pretty good show. A lot of people are saying it's probably the best show of AEW um, of it in, in, a, in about a year. Um, by far their best show of 2022. Pretty good show, man. Um, I enjoyed I mean, it, I'm man. Excited. AEW Wednesday now. I'm I'm actually excited. Yeah, me too. I said it, I even said it on my um on my dynamite recap during the week. I'm like, I'm excited for AEW going forward. It seems like Tony Khan has kind of like pressed a reset button and he's gonna now build it around MJF. Um so yeah, I mean I'm excited. They're giving Jamie Hayter a chance. This was probably one, if not the best fucking woman's match. In AEW's history between Jamie Hayter and Tony Storm, that was dude. Honestly, that was top three, probably along obviously the, the main event, and then maybe the Jungle Boy Luchasaurus, or maybe the Fatal Four Way for the Ring of Honor title. But that was definitely top three, top five match that um that Jamie Hayter Tony Storm match. It was a hell of a match. It was a hell of a match, man. It was a good show. It was a good show. I I probably give like a seven or eight out of ten. Yeah, no, very good show. Um, and you know, like I said, it's exciting to watch Dynamite again. Because it was going down in views, man. They they were getting one million. Now this past week, it went to eight hundred thousand. So I, there's a good chance they might get to one million this week. I hope they do. 
And yeah, man. Um, like MJF is going to bring them views up, you know, since he's champion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? I think people were getting turned off because he was teasing being a baby face. And now that he's officially going to stay a heel, I think that's going to get people back excited again. Did you see him in like, the media scrum? Like he was going off. <laughs> he, he even said, fuck you. Yeah, he's a fucking hilarious, man. I love him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the only guy in here who actually is a star, and I'm going to go film a movie now. <laughs> he, he actually he acknowledged the fact he's filming a movie. Yeah, I'm, yeah, he was going off. He was like, you fucking Mark's jerking your dick off in your mom's basement or something like that? Yeah, he yeah, he was going off. Um, so, yeah, I just, what do you think when Mark, do so you think he's going to show up, or do you think he's going to take some time off? Uh, I think he's going to take some time off, because, like, remember, he was supposed to take a vacation. Yeah, before the whole CM Punk shit happened. My prediction is he couldn't take some time off and maybe come off, maybe comes back around Revolutions in March and maybe they have the rematch in March at Revolution. Yeah. They, they have winters coming, but that's like a, it's like a dynamite, uh, like a dynamite special. It's not really a pay-per-view. So I wonder if they'll have MJF defend the title. They probably will. At least sometime oh, before be, Revolution. I mean, Revolution time until fucking March. It's going to be either um, Ricky Starks or Ethan Page. Remember? Oh, fuck. I forgot. Yeah, the Eliminator. Yeah. I mean, it would make sense for Ricky Starks to win because he's actually he's a, a baby, baby face. Yeah. It's going to be Ricky Starks. He's going to bury him. Oh, my God. MJF is going to kill him. They do all that shit. I'm, remember, they, they didn't they have fucking Penta? Fucking um, get a match with John Moxley a few weeks ago. They'll randomly do that. They'll just throw a mid Carter in there. Yeah, it's like a fucking mid Carter challenging for the world title. Come on. I, I, that, that's one thing I do hate about AEW, how they'll, they'll randomly they'll just throw a fucking um, mid Carter. Oh, tonight we got fucking John Moxley versus Penta El Cero for the. I'm like, what? Is he in a fucking tag team? What the fuck? Did, it's like WWE won. The, oh, Tonight, we got Roman Reigns versus fucking Kofi Kingston. I'm like, wait, what? Or Roman yeah. Reigns versus fucking um, Xavier Woods. What? What's the reason for it? Yep. So if they did that, they're for sure going to put Ricky Starks. They're going to let him do it. Yeah. And it's I mean, going to be on a fucking random Wednesday dynamite. And it might not even main event. It might just fucking mean like in the middle of the show. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, like, we can predict for, like, the next year, MJF will be champion, probably. Yeah, he, they're going to do, like, a Roman Reigns-type shit, like I said. Interesting to see also what they do with um, William Regal. Um, like I said, he, he, he didn't stay to celebrate with him in the ring, and he also did it. He wasn't with him in the press conference. So, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's still going to be on TV, William Regal. But it's going to be interesting. To, no way he's going to be with the comeback club. He, he, no way he can just go back and be with the other guys, right? Yeah, I think him his time in the Blackpool Combat Club is over. Yeah, that's what people are saying. It's getting stale. It's getting stale. Maybe they were saying maybe Wheeler, Wheeler Yuta and Claudio can be a tag team. But yeah, for sure, let Brian Danielson be a singles guy. Yeah, that group's like going down, I think. That group's all been together since March. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, I think it's time to – it's not, like, it's not doing anything for me, like, anymore. Yeah, no, no. no remember they teased um, uh, Brian Danielson and Willard Yuta having some type of beef? Yeah. And then they just stopped doing it. So maybe they'll go back to that now. And like I said, I wouldn't mind seeing Willard Yuta and, and Cesaro as champion, like a tag team. Like a tag team, yeah. And then just let Brian Danielson – maybe Brian Danielson, you can build them up to – eventually challenge um, MJF in the future for the AEW yep. championship. That'd be good. He can get up before maybe, I'm going to get payback on Moxley. So yeah, some shit like that. It's very interesting because like, they don't have a pay-per-view unless, I mean, unless I'm not looking at the calendar right, they don't have a pay-per-view until March. That's not for another four months. So, now they do have a, a thing, a, a thing in Japan. The kingdom yeah. is. I think Kenny Omega is actually gonna be in the. She's gonna. He's gonna fight Will Osprey. But that's for that's for New Japan. Yeah, that's and, not AEW. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, unless I, I, I'm missing something, I don't think their next paper is until March Revolution. 
So it's yeah, interesting to see how they do the next four months. I have like a, like a Christmas thing um, in December, I think. Winter, winter's coming, but that's like a dynamite. It's like a, yeah, it's not like a real pay-per-view. It, it, it's like a dynamite special, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's going to happen all in dynamite. You know, like, remember a couple months ago, they had that dynamite show? It, it, it's, yeah, it's weird how they do their pay-per-views because, so they'll go like, they'll go like four months without a pay-per-view. And then they'll have like, so, so right now, they'll have the pay-per-view in March. And then they have double or nothing in May. And then they'll go again until September. And then again, in, that, that, that's weird to me how they, they go four months without a pay-per-view. And then they do a pay-per-view in like, in two months again. That's weird, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't understand it. They should do a pay-per-view maybe like January, April, July, October. It's weird how like they don't do nothing for four months. And then they do two pay-per-views in like two months. And then again, they don't do nothing for four months. And then they do again. Because they just had Rebel, uh, what was it called? Fu- uh, All Out in September. Yeah. And then here, so but you had fucking full gear in November. But now you don't have anything until March. And then you have fucking double or nothing in May. It doesn't make sense how they do them. Like, they go four months without pay-per-views. And they go like back-to-back two months. They should spread them out more. Yeah, have more. Like, like I said, have Revolution in um, January, Double or Nothing in April, um, All Out in July, and fucking um, in like October have full gear. They'll be more yeah. spread out. Every four months you have a pay per view. It's weird true. how they do it, but anyways, whatever. I think. I think- is that it? <laughs> we literally said the same sentence. Um, yeah, that I think sense. that's it. So yeah, let's let's see what what happens, man. Survivor Series coming up, so we'll be back on Friday for Survivor Series, um, which will be a pretty quick video. We'll only like five matches. We'll do that on Friday night, and then on Sunday we'll continue to come here for a weekly um, podcast. So yeah, we're out like a light. Yeah, other than that, we're out like a light. Have a good have a good week and. Have a, have a good Thanksgiving. Have a good Thanksgiving. That's another. Oh yeah. So fr- Friday, are you are you traveling or no? No. Okay. All right. So then we'll be here Friday. Okay. So yeah. So we'll, next time will be Friday. Um, for our Survivor Series um recap. I mean uh, preview. Yeah, we'll be here Friday. So see you guys have later. Have a good night. Have a good night. Peace.